um, I had a lovely subscriber message me and asked me to give tips on how I go about making my fur dolls because she had gotten some go for it faux fur from Lion Brand and uh, she already had it pulled apart and she wanted to know because you can't see the stitches. If you can see, <laughs> look at that. It's like impossible because of all the fuzziness. So I was trying to actually send this to her in the email, but it would, every time I try to send a video, it was like coming out. It wouldn't let me do it. So I'm just going to show a little tip that hopefully comes out good enough. So please bear with me while I do this. And that way, if you too would like to do some furry dolls, um, this may help you. So, for amigurumi, you always crochet continuously. And then you'll move your stitch marker up as you go. And, I mean, you could slip stitch into the first stitch and then chain one. And then go about your business. But, I don't ever do that. Um, I mean, for this, you could do it, so that way you wouldn't have to have your stitch marker, and then you would know, like, where you left off, because you're not going to see the little, um, slip stitch marks, with, like you would in, um, regular acrylic yarn, or cotton yarn, whatever yarn you, that you may be using. But, I'm just going to do it the way I always do. So, I'm using a 9mm clover hook. That's an M and N. Huh. Just notice that. But anyway. Um, alrighty. So what I do. I'm going to show you two different ways. So first way is the way I always do it. I fill for my stitches. So this will be my first stitch. Yeah. And then I'll fill around. And then I know right here would be my second stitch. Now when you're using a bigger hook, you will fill your stitches. And what I like about this is because of the fur... You're stuffing, even though um, if you push your finger through, it will come through. Your uh, fiber fill will not come through. And another thing, before I get into crocheting, another really cool trick that you could do is you can um, use the nylon. I always call them pantyhose. You can get pantyhose, like really cheap. Even at the dollar store, I think they have like pantyhose. And you can actually stuff that with your fiber fill. And then you could put it inside of your doll. So that way you know for sure none of the cotton, um, your fiber fill will come out. So that's another little cool trick uh, for your amigurumis that you do. Because even if you crochet very, very tightly, which I do for my other amigurumi dolls. I don't have, oh, let me see. Alrighty, so for this e ER right here, you see how tightly it is? Um, this is a bigger yarn, but you still have these little, little spots. And the reason why you crochet so tightly is that over time, you don't want your fiber fill to like escape, come out, and things like that. So, um... But the nylon option is really good because then it's a really good thing that your fiber fill will not come out. Uh, so yeah, that's another little option that you could do. And like I said, you could find them, you can even probably find, maybe at Joanne's, maybe like a fabric shop, like regular nylon and you could just like, you know, sew it into a circle and stuff it and do all that. I mean, if, if you wanted to, that is. Alrighty, so. Well, let's get into this. So like I said, I fill, I have my stitch marker here. And another thing, you can, now I'm, I'm going to go to 24. So you can put all, all your stitches marked. If you have 24 stitch markers, a little thing like this, you can use and um, put a marker on all of your stitches. That'd be it pain in the butt <laughs> but you can just fill so and you can really film so right here's one just take your little fingers then go in and this will be my first stitch so there's my one right here is my second one right 
right here is my third. So then I'm going to go one and right back into that spot, two. Okay, right here is my fourth. So there's, right here is my fifth, right beside it, and then one and two. And like I said, using the bigger hook with the fur, you really, really, really do um, feel that really, really good. So I'm going to pull this apart and I, I'm trying to get my little stitch back in there because I pulled it out already. I'm going to add acrylic to this and show you that you can do it. Um, Thank you for my tip. <laughs> my son goes, I found you two coins. Okay, so I'm just going to add this in here. So I'm just going to attach it that way. This is not how I attach my yarn. I'm just going to do this quickly so you can see. So here is my first one. Wait, where is it? Right here. So let me get that little tail out the way. All right. So then over here would be my second one. And you see I have that um, acrylic added. So then now you can see your stitch at the top. So let me just do a couple stitches in here. Alrighty. So as you can see in here, what you would do after you got your doll done is you would just pull your fur out. And then you don't see that acrylic. Do you see that? You don't see it. But at the top, you see your stitches. So there's another thing. And I always try to stick. So for this, now I'm, I'm showing you with um, the tan. But I would use a white that really stood out. So that way... It would blend in with this just in case you would be able to see it, but then you'd be able to see it on there. But look at that. There you go. So you see your stitches. So that is another thing. You can always pair your fur with a regular yarn, uh, four weight acrylic, so that way you see your stitches. And then when you go back, boom, you saw your stitches and you don't have to fill, especially if you have poor eyesight. Um, which many of us do because of doing things like this, right? Oh, thank you, babe. <laughs> so that is just like a cool little trick that you can do. So pairing it with the acrylic yarn. And like I said, for this one, I did the tan so you can really see it. And you'll see it with the white. Um, I mean, if you're using white or not. But look, and then what you would do, you would just go like this. When you're done with your project... You would just fluff that fur up and look. You don't see a thing, do you? Nope. But there you do. But here you don't. But there you do. But here you don't. <laughs> so already those are two ways that you can do one. Actually three because if you wanted to do your stitch markers all around. But um, there's just a little quickie tip that you can do for your fur. I hope you can fully understand this. I uh, hope it was clear for you. Do you see my little heats? <laughs> this is, whoops, this one will be my husband with the goofy face. This would be Alyssa and Aiden making fun of him. And then me and my crazy self flying in. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed this little quick tippy tip. Um, I hope it helps if you are looking to make a furry little creature. So I think this would be the best option for those just starting out with the fur because then you would really be able to get your stitches and then, you know, learn how to fill and, and get that all. So, alrighty y'all, that's it. I hope you're all having a hooterific day as always. Um, have a hooterific day. Have a hooterific day. Who in and out. Bye. Bye.